Okay, back to where we left off. So next fight is Doctor Severius and Nicoduck versus Doctor Mindbender. So we see that Savarius is realizing without Xanatos backing him up, he has to forge alliance with Nicoduck. Until Dr. Mindbender and his thingies. Oh, sorry about that. Shows up. I still have not yet seen the uh, G.I. Joe Renegades. Hopefully I will. I know it's been used in many wars. Like this war, non Disney Villain Tournament, and Hero vs. Villains. And even Zabria's Wars. And did you know that Dr. Severus is voiced by Tim Curry? I'm not sure if, he, if I did mention that, but uh, it is interesting to see Tim, knowing Tim Curry voice this guy. I mean, Tim Curry is really good at playing villains. And I just don't like Dr. Mindbender. I don't know why. I mean, he looks like an AC teenager. I don't know why. I mean, maybe that's just what, maybe if I watch the show, maybe my opinion on him will change, I guess. I don't know. Oh, of course, he's going to die. Oh, it's not like we're ever going to see. But uh, seriously, if you've seen Gargoyles, you know he faked his death. Dr. Mindbender wins. The next fight is... uh. Devimon and Hecate versus Queen Law and Skeleton King. Well, that was a weird way I paused. Like, Rocky Ooh! <laughs> Listen to heavy metal. So, Stalker has discovered that the pieces of the jewels are in the hands of Mojo Jojo, and he. Is that what it says? Recently recovered by Mojo Jojo and sends. And then uh, Stalker has to send Devimon and Hecate to recover them. Eesh, that guy's creepy. Of course, they're in the lost city of Opar. Where else do you think Queen Law and Skeleton King would hang out? I mean, he did meet her, so he probably didn't meet her in Opar. And I know that Devimon seems to be like the only Digimon villain all or the only anime villain to be used in this war so far. I mean, I know the original war rule was that no anime villains, which I understand why not many people like anime. But I am glad you guys did change that in the later rounds, where you got Full Metal Alchemist villains, mostly the homunculi. But uh, I just think other Digimon villains in there. I know my Otismon does appear later. Why not other Digimon villains, which... To me, personally, Digimon is a much better show than Pokemon. It has better story, better writing, better character development, better chemistry. Digimon, better than the Pokemon anime, 100%. I'm just saying. Like, why not, like, Edamon, you know, that that monkey elf is. And it's just, I know it's weird, but it'd be kind of entertaining to see a monkey elf is fighting with a Disney animal villain. Imagine Edamon fighting against Shere Khan, or Tublon, or Zero. How could you not make a laugh about that? Or, there were like the Dark Emperors, or the Dark Masters. Like the one that's like a jokester kind of guy. I forgot his name. I think it was Piedmon, or something like that. I think there was Apoclamon, who was like the main final villain. Okay, how cool would it be if you had the Digimon Emperor in that war? Now, that'd be cool. Just for the watching. And it looks like Devimon and Hecate wins the next fight. Gravitina versus Vexus from My Life as a Teenage Robot. I'm not too big on that. I've seen bits of it, but I didn't get to watch the whole thing. I just don't watch a lot of Cartoon Network or Nickelodeon shows. Uh, whatever that dude is again. Uh, oh, yeah, actually, uh, Vexus arrives at Zerg's Tower, meets with the Alliances. Uh... Uh, God, I'm sorry, I'm just not big on my life as a teenage robot that much. I just don't watch a lot of cartoons. With the intention of conquering it. Oh, she wants to conquer it. However, Gravitina, Warhog, and Gantu are all there to defend it. 
Yeah, I guess she, is she like a queen wasp or something? Hey, vexes, I mean. I don't remember much about Gravitina. I didn't... I, I don't remember her being part of the Buzz Lightyear cartoon. All I remember some parts of it, but it's been a long time since I've seen it. I remember a few villains. One was like XR, who was like very villainous version of him, with a... Except his head was gold, and his head was... That villain's version of XR was like very muscular, and his head was like red. And one thing I never realized until... Is her head that big? Oh my god, what the heck? Even his turbo went on, what the heck? Okay. That does not look like something you would see out of Disney or even Pixar. That looks like something you would see out of a, a spoof of a sci-fi film. Or something that makes fun of sci-fi tropes. Or this does look like something that came out of Robot Chicken. But seriously, if your head was that big, you would not be able to carry your whole giant forehead or whatever big head. It would crush your body. Like in the Nostalgia Critics review of Shark Boy and Lava Girl, you know that scene, or I'm just going to point this out. In, in the movie Shark Boy and Lava Girl, I'm not big on that movie. I, I find the Nostalgia Chris review of that one funnier. His head down gets bigger and his whole body cannot re carry it. He turned upside down. It can either turn upside down or it can crush your whole body and your blood splat everywhere. I guess she's Gravitina because she's all gravities and stuff. I'm, I'm sorry, but I, I kind of found her stupid. There's nothing fascinating or threatening or intimidating with the Gravitina. She looks stupid with a head that big. My goodness. I was rooting for Vexus to win. Even though I'm not big on that robot, teenage robot show. Ugh, oh, great. Gravitina wins. Okay, that was just graphic. The next fight is Hades and the Headless Horseman versus Sam Hain. The Sam Hain has arrived to the underworld. Actually, I should have asked a question. Where has the Headless Horseman been? Well, I am glad we got to see him there. Well, later. So it's kind of interesting. You've got Sam Hain, who is basically the Celtic god of dead people, you know, like, he's basically like the god of the underworld of some sort. If my research on Celtic mythology was right, or paganism, which Sam Hain was in the origin of Halloween, fighting against Hades from Greek mythology, who is the god of the underworld. Jeez, that thing is creepy! Yeah, again, he's on The Real Ghostbusters. It's a cartoon show called The Real Ghostbusters. Yeesh. And he summons, of course, the Headless Horseman. Yeah! <laughs> Sorry, my laugh was a bit quiet. I'm trying to be quiet. I don't want to interrupt some people. Plus, my mom's at home. I just don't want to... The starver and all, whatever. Throw the pumpkin at the pumpkin head ghost dude. Okay. Hades and the Headless Horseman wins. And, uh, looks like Eris shows up. Yeah, this show looks like. Because Hades realized that their rivalry has not ended. And now for the... Well, I would say intermission, but it did say epilogue, but it's technically an intermission. So in Camelon, most of the council, remaining former allies of Ruber, trying to 
see who's to our VAs for power amongst themselves. Okay, if you guys have no idea what BIA means. means compete eagerly with someone in order to do achieve yeah it's basically like that Let's see hold on I love that editing with how he makes it like they actually are saying he's like is that so like he's respond to his what Robotnik said there are winners and there are losers, and then Lord Mouse will be replying, Is that so? Brilliant editing. I can't imagine either Blackheart or the Wizard of Wonderland being leaders. I just can't. And then... Fire Lord Ozai and Shafar have arrived. Okay, I love the masking. Well, mainly the editing sort of way. Not really mask, but just get these clips together. Hold on. Uh, if you didn't hear that, it's a uh, but it's a new order now. Meaning now they're gonna follow Fire Lord Ozai's orders. Burn the entire planet. Okay, that was Disney versus non Disney villains part two, ooh, round ten, part one. Sorry, because it took so long. I just got, got some things to do. So, yeah, see you guys in the next video.